When I first started on YouTube, sometimes people would post book reviews, and I haven't seen one. Well, actually, I did see one um, from Project Life Size. Um, I do see reviews, I think it's on Tuesdays. Hers are good, but um, I've noticed that fewer and fewer people are posting reviews, and I just happen to re be reading a really good book um, right now, and it's by a woman named Sarah Bakewell. And the title is How to Live a Life of Montaigne in One Question and 20 Attempts at an Answer. And it is brilliant. It is a biography, in a way, of the life of uh, Michel de Montaigne, who was, he was an essayist. Um, and you really can't get a grasp on who Montaigne was until you've read some of his essays. He was so brilliant. <clears throat> and um, but he wrote so long ago, and yet he seems so modern. I'm just now reading about some of um, Bakewell's thoughts on Montaigne on cruelty, and I think it's particularly interesting because I've been getting a lot of comments about how you know here on YouTube we don't really do anything in the world per se um, as a result of our YouTube. I mean, we all do things in the world, obviously, but that YouTube is somehow divided from what we do in the world. And I think that's a valid criticism. I really do. But I just happened to be reading this. And Montaigne is somebody who actually did act in the world um, in ways that, that I really find um, exemplary. And here's what, just a little bit of what uh, Bakewell says about Montaigne on cruelty. Cruelty nauseated Montaigne. He could not help himself. He hated it cruelly, as, as he wrote making a point of the paradox. His revulsion was intrinsic, as much a part of him as the openness written all over his face. That was why he could not stand hunting. Even seeing a chicken having its neck wrung or a hare caught by dogs horrified him. The same perspective leaping tendency that enabled him to borrow his cat's point of view. And there's a really brilliant essay of his from his cat's point of view, in case you're wondering what she's talking about there, <clears throat> made a, it impossible for him to see a hair being ripped apart without feeling it in his gut. If he could not watch a hair in pain, still less could he stomach the human tortures and judicial killings that were common in his day. Even the executions of the law, however reasonable they may be, I cannot, and this is a quote from him, I cannot witness with a steady gaze. In his own career, he was expected to order such punishments, but he refused to do so. I am so squeamish about hunting that for the service of reason itself, I cannot do it. And when occasions have summoned me to sentencing criminals, I have tended to fall short of justice. He was not the only writer of his time to oppose either hunting or torture. What is unusual in Montaigne is his reasons for it, his visceral rapport with others. When speaking to the Brazilian Indians in Rouen, he was struck by how they spoke of men as halves of one another, wondering at the sight of rich Frenchmen gorging themselves while their other halves starved on their doorstep. For Montaigne, all humans share an element of their being, and so do all things, all other living things. And here's a, him, here's something he actually wrote. It is one and the same nature that rolls its course, even if animals were less similar to us than they are, we would still owe them a duty of fellow feeling simply because they are alive. <clears throat> and he went on to say, there is a certain respect and a general duty to humanity that attaches us not only to animals who have life and feeling, but even to trees and plants. We owe justice to man and mercy and kindness to other creatures that may be capable of receiving it. There is some relationship between them and us, 
and some mutual obligation. This obligation applies in trivial encounters as well and as life or death ones. We owe other beings the countless small acts of kindness and empathy that Nietzsche would describe as goodwill. Um, anyway, it's a brilliant, brilliant book. And if you're looking for something good to read um, and you're thinking you want to pick up something, um, this might be the book to look for in your library or even try to buy. Um, it's been out for a little while, but um, so you might be able to get a used copy. Anyway, link to a video of um, Bakewell's in the low bar and also to the Amazon link for the book itself and for uh, Montaigne's uh, essays as well. Anyway, just thought I'd throw this out there. These don't ever get very many views when you talk about books, but I just love this one so much I had to say something. Take care. Talk to you later, guys.